Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel ESP Daniela. So I'm just going to get started with this video right off the bat. Uh, as someone who has won 30 scholarships over the years, a total of over $125,000 debt free for undergrad and my graduate school degree, I have a lot to say about scholarships, especially the mistakes that are preventing you and me alike in the past from winning. Um, even though I have won 30 scholarships, I have applied to a little over 100 scholarships. So that meant that I faced rejection 70 times over. So with that being said, I don't want you guys to repeat my mistakes and the common mistakes of other applicants alike, because so many people say, oh, I've applied to 100 scholarships and I never won. Well, it's probably because you're doing one, if not all of these mistakes that I'm about to comb through. So yeah, let's get into this video. Okay, so I'm going to pull up all of the mistakes on my phone. I have it like on this Google document. So the first mistake that people are making is that they are putting all their eggs into one basket. And so by this, I mean, like I have so many students who reach out to me saying that they only apply for scholarships on scholarship search engine platforms like scholarships.com, bold.org, FastWeb, Unigo, et cetera. And of course, these places are great places to start with your scholarship process. But at the same time, you shouldn't be limiting yourself to only one of those platforms or even just those platforms alone. Um, make sure that you are applying for not only scholarships from scholarship search engines, but also using Google, because after all, Google is actually the most optimized search engine there is in the world and scholarships are being created almost every single day. And so with these scholarship search engine databases, it takes a while for their their system to be updated with the most up to date scholarships. So you're more likely to find newer scholarships that are recently just created via a Google search. So make sure you're doing that. And so with that being said, that leads me to my second point, which is you are probably only applying in one competitive tier. And so with scholarships, there are different types of tiers. So there's like the scholarships of where they're open to anyone in the nation, meaning anyone really can apply to it. Then there are state level scholarships, scholarships specific to your institution, your university that you're trying to attend or already attending. And then also local scholarships, like those that are particular to a certain city, certain county, school district, et cetera. So if you are only applying for those national scholarships that are way too saturated with competition, you're not very likely to win unless you have like very, very good stats, like the type of stats that are good enough to get you into like one of the Ivy Leagues, for example. So if you are someone who is like, I guess, above average with your stats, but not like super above average, but like above average or below average, whatever it may be, you really want to mainly focus on those local opportunities. You're going to be way more likely to win. Um, as seen on my website, I list like all the scholarships I've won over the years dating back from my junior year of high school all the way now to grad school. And you will notice that a lot of them came from my state of Texas, local to my area, specifically North Texas. Um, so yeah, that's an example of what you need to be doing. So the next mistake that you're doing is that you're probably only applying for scholarships in one specific category. So as an example of this, there are different types of scholarships. There are those that are just strictly merit-based, those that are essay-based, whether that's like a personal essay or a research essay. Um, there's also scholarships that might be particular to leadership experience, a community service, what you have already done within your work field, your study concentration, et cetera. So if you are applying for only merits-based type of scholarships, but not focusing on these other types of scholarships, then you are selling yourself short. You need to figure out which one is your domain and which is your territory of where you would be more likely to win. So Another common scholarship mistake that people make with their scholarship applications is that they apply too early. Now, you're probably thinking, what? Isn't it better to apply early rather than applying last minute? Yes and no. And here's why. So let's say that a scholarship is due December and you applied for it months before, like in the summer, July or something like that. Um, but in between that time frame, you experience something, you accomplish something that could really help your application stand out even more than the initial application that you already submitted. But a lot of times with scholarships, once you submit your application, you cannot update it. You cannot give those up-to-date details and make your application stand out more. So you're just left with the old version. So that's why it's sometimes important to apply 
um, closer to the deadline. That doesn't necessarily mean like the night of the deadline, but like two to three days beforehand so that your application is more likely to win. However, I will say that there is an exception to this. So sometimes there are scholarships that don't necessarily have a deadline, but rather once they read through the first couple of applications of where um, X amount of people meet the criteria needed to be awarded that scholarship, they will go ahead and close that application. So it's somewhat similar to like with the FAFSA, 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 oh my gosh, I can never say that right. But similar to that, how it's like first come, first serve, some scholarships are like that too. So sometimes if you come across a scholarship like that, make sure to take note of that. And that's the type that you do want to apply early to. So another mistake that people make with their scholarship applications is that they are not organized with their paperwork. Now, there are several elements that go into a scholarship application, like your, sometimes it might even require like your resume, cover letter, essay, letters of recommendation, official transcript or unofficial transcript. But if you are not organized with these things beforehand, you're going to feel overwhelmed, which will dissuade you from even applying for scholarships in the first place. And also you're gonna miss deadlines, especially if you procrastinate like me. With that in mind, um, I would highly encourage you to trick yourself about that scholarship deadline. Cause if you procrastinate like I do with everything that I do in life, um, you're gonna miss a deadline. And also on that note, make sure that you are staying on top of those time zones. Because if you live in like my state of Texas, right? We run on central time, but if you are applying to a scholarship that runs on Eastern time and you're applying to that like last minute, a couple of minutes before it's even due, your applications let you just wasted your time. That has happened to me so much. Oh my God. But yeah, don't, don't repeat my mistake. Brief intermission here. I hope that this has been helpful so far. However, did you know that this video is actually only the tip of the iceberg? I have so much to teach you. Let me explain. If you really want to increase your chances of winning scholarships, then consider enrolling in my online course, The Scholarship Algorithm. It gives you a step-by-step -step strategy on how to go about the overall scholarship process the most effective way possible, increasing your chances of winning by 10 times more. Here are some of the people who have won as a result of the the course videos. Additionally, the course also comes with my book by the same title, The Scholarship Winning Likelihood Calculator, and my personalized services if you want to add that on too. See, if I had something like this back when I was a senior in high school, there is no doubt in my mind that I would have gotten a full ride scholarship right off the bat. No questions asked. And for those watching this video, you can get 25% off the basic master course with this promo code. Okay, now back to the main video. Okay, so as for the next mistake, a lot of times people do not think from the perspective of their competition. So for this, I'm going to use an example of how I was able to win this $10,000 scholarship from NBC slash my university for grad school. So for the prompt for this particular scholarship essay, it was to um, write about why it is important to have diversity in newsrooms. The reason why the prompt was this was because for undergrad and grad school, I've been in the school of journalism. So um, before going about that prompt, I was like, okay, what is my competition going to do? How are they going to approach this with their writing? And so I came to the conclusion that most people would say, okay, it's important to have diversity in the newsroom as far as who's on camera, um, who's calling the shots behind the scenes, the types of stories we are reporting. So those were like the three most common things that I felt other people would say in their writing. So of course I addressed those things, but I made sure that my overall essay more so talked about a different perspective that would ensure that my writing stood out. So with that being said, my essay instead talked about the importance of diversity in the official sources that we are seeking out for stories. Like for example, a lot of times when we're watching the news and they bring on like a legal expert or a doctor to talk about COVID or whatever it may be, a lot of times they are not a person of color. And that just kind of reinforces people's implicit biases that uh, people of color are less, quote unquote, intelligent to go about being the main source of information for these broad um, intellectual topics. I hope that made sense. But yeah, that was my approach to my writing. And it ended up getting me a $10,000 scholarship. So Again, make sure you are thinking from the perspective of those competing against you and then do the exact opposite of what they're going to do. So that leads me to my next point, which is that you are probably not thinking 
from the perspective of the scholarship evaluating committee. So a lot of times when I am editing people's scholarship essays, I have a service for that as well as other personalized services that you can check out linked in the description box down below. But a lot of times when they are writing their essay, it essentially is just a sob story. There is this common misconception that the only way to get financial aid, scholarships for college, that is that you have to talk about your traumas, you got to overshare. You don't have to do that. Now, I will say that for the very first scholarship I won, I did talk about my traumas, but I did not feel comfortable talking about that over and over again with people who don't even know me. So I had to totally transform my writing. And so if you want to learn more about how to go about the scholarship essay process, make sure you check out my other YouTube videos that focus on that. And part three of my scholarship book, which I will talk about later in this video, goes even more into detail on what it takes to write a winning essay because the essay is the most important part of your application. But back to the perspective of the scholarship committee, I just want you to think for a moment. If you are sitting as one of the judges for a particular scholarship and you are reading through a hundred, maybe a thousand different applicants, applications, and the vast majority of them are talking about traumatic things, over time, you are going to be desensitized and you're not going to be moved by those stories. It's similar to how when we watch the news and we are overexposed to too much negative um, negative content, negative things going on with, throughout the world, it makes us less likely to want to watch the news. So with that being said, if your essay can instead be a breath of fresh air, you're going to be more likely to win, just saying. So another mistake that people make with their scholarship applications is that they take the essay prompt too literally. So by this, let's say that a scholarship essay prompt says to identify as to why you deserve a scholarship. And your opening sentence is, I deserve this scholarship because that, my friend, is immature writing. You want to be indirect yet at the same time persuasive as to why you deserve a scholarship. Like your essay and its entirety should speak for itself as to why you deserve to get it. Additionally, another mistake people make with their scholarship essays is that they are trying too hard to sound smart. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but like a little over half of the American population only reads at like a fifth or sixth grade level. I'll link the article headline there. But if taking that into account, if you are within your writing only using like super fancy SAT vocabulary type of words, and you're writing this to a scholarship committee that may or may not have people who read at that level, you already lost the attention span of your reader. Like no one wants to constantly comb through a thesaurus or a dictionary just to figure out what the heck you're talking about. So make sure that you're writing is accessible to people no matter their education level. So as for the next mistake, when I am evaluating over people's applications, again, I have services for that. A lot of times their essays just read like a resume. Like there is a clear distinction between the two. And also on that note, sometimes scholarships will require you to also attach like your resume. So why is it that you are reiterating word for word what you have already said in your resume? Like you're wasting your time when you could be talking about something else. So with your essay, you want to make sure that there is something, a humanized element within your writing. So as an example of this, you can talk about how you have made an impact on others, how others impacted or inspired you, and also how you plan on continuing to make an impact on others, like your overall life goals. If you want to start a charity or create your own scholarship, that's one thing that scholarship committees love to hear because it shows that you are like-minded to your audience. With that being said, I go more into details about what scholarship committees want to hear in this video, so make sure to click that when you can. But yeah, that gives you an example of what not to do. So as for the final mistake that you are likely making with your scholarship applications is that you are not seeking constructive criticism or even professional help from a scholarship expert such as myself when you are rejected from scholarships. I mean, I just, guys, I want for you to think about it. Let's say that you failed an assignment or an exam or class what do you do when you fail something? Well, you go to office hours, you go to tutoring so that you can improve for the next time around. Applying that same concept to scholarships, if you are rejected from a scholarship, from scholarships several times over, but you never, you know, seek professional help um, to figure out as to why you are being rejected, then you are wasting your time. There are certain things within our scholarship applications 
that we simply will not be able to identify on our own. And on that note, um, not only can you seek constructive criticism from like scholarship experts like me, or even um, like a teacher, but you can also reach out to the people over that particular scholarship via email. For example, a real life example here. I had a student um, last year in 2020 of where she was a finalist for this $5,000 scholarship. However, they ended up not choosing her. And I was like, okay, well, you got to email them and ask why were you not chosen? And so their reason for not choosing her was that um, in the final decision process, they were evaluating who had the most up-to-date extracurriculars and activities involvement with their school. And so since she was a freshman in college, she was mainly just referring to the things she did back in high school, whereas they wanted to hear what she was doing as a current college student. So that was the one thing that prevented her from winning that $5,000 scholarship, just one aspect of her application. So after she got that constructive criticism, that feedback, later on, she applied for a different $5,000 scholarship and ended up winning that one. So keep that in mind. Anywho, I hope that this video has been helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my other videos. I have a lot of great content that has helped a lot of people win. And of course, if you're interested in any of my personal life services, my book, my online course, because we go deep into detail there um, about what it takes to win scholarships, make sure to check all of that out. Bye.